It's hard to make predictions, especially about the future, but that's exactly what we'll try to do in this video. 2021 was a strange year. There was a big regime change, we finally beat the pandemic, and everybody took off their masks and went back to the office. That was the original plan anyway. Unfortunately, it's your conspiracy theorist uncle on Facebook who keeps making the right predictions. But as developers and entrepreneurs, we don't care about these externalities. We figure out ways to make money writing code with the environment they give us. We thrive in the chaos. If you're new here, like and subscribe, then we'll start things off by looking at major trends that will influence the developer landscape in 2022. Then for each trend, I'll give you one of my personal weird app ideas that you can use to build a quadrillion dollar startup. The first trend we need to talk about is Web3, or the decentralized web. Some people think Web3 is the point where all modern technology converges, out of which new unimaginable technologies will diverge in the future. Other people, though, think that Web3 is just the latest buzzword to pump crypto scams. But what is Web3 exactly? A completely decentralized version of our current internet with no firewalls, no tolls, no government regulation. You want to build a new internet. Yes. It's basically a vision for the internet where everything is decentralized and regulated with smart contracts and crypto instead of the current status quo where everything is controlled by Google, Facebook, and Amazon. In a decentralized app or dApp, the user owns all their data. Instead of an email password identity, users are identified by a blockchain wallet address that usually connects with a browser plugin like MetaMask, while the app itself is code that lives on the blockchain in the form of a smart contract. The idea is really cool because it gives people real control over their own slice of the internet. As as opposed to using services that are mediated by a central ivory tower like a big tech corporation or government. On the other hand, there are a ton of ways one might criticize Web3. It's chaotic, hard to develop quality apps with current tool chains. It doesn't benefit most mainstream businesses in any practical way. Most of the tokens are owned by Silicon Valley insiders, so it's not really decentralized at all. And you really don't need cryptocurrency to build a decentralized app in the first place. If crypto prices collapse for whatever reason, I think a lot of the excitement for Web3 would disappear. I could go on, but one of my favorite quotes is, pessimists sound smart but optimists make money. Building a decentralized internet is not an easy thing to do. There's a huge opportunity for developers who are willing to tackle the problems in this space. A big part of success is timing. Facebook, Google, and Amazon were all in the right place at the right time to capitalize on Web 1.0 and 2.0. I think you should be skeptical about Web 3, but if it does go mainstream, you'll be very glad you got in early. A full Web 3 tutorial is on the way, so make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Now, here's my Web 3 startup idea. It's pretty obvious that the corporate media is dying. Not many people in the key demo actually trust or watch the mainstream media. But they can continue to force feed us this content by making it artificially rank high on platforms like Twitter and YouTube, and even by removing things like the dislike button to limit our ability to point out bad content. What I think would be awesome is an entirely decentralized news network where journalists could upload video, articles, and other reporting and be compensated based on its reach. It would incentivize good journalism and eliminate the possibility of a top-down propaganda machine. Journalists win, consumers win, the only one who gets fucked is the establishment. And now a word from our sponsors. Hi, my name's Jeff, and I'm a 10x developer. And you can be one too if you start every day with a hearty breakfast from McDonald's, like the Sausage Egg McMuffin Value Meal, available for a limited time for under $14. Remember guys, real developers eat at McDonald's. I'm loving it. I'm fat as shit. And that brings us to our next trend, the metaverse. You likely saw Mark Zuckerberg's ultra cringe, I mean inspiring vision about the metaverse. I pulled the channel and the majority of you thought the vision was dumb. I totally agree with that because I would never want to be involved in any kind of metaverse run by Facebook, a company with a terrible track record of abusing our data and violating our privacy. That being said, Facebook is not the only company building a metaverse. They're just trying to hijack the name. The general concept is to build an internet-based platform that has multiple access points like your phone, VR, and AR. Then you have a single profile that you can use to interact with different businesses and apps within that platform and communicate with other users in a virtual environment like you would in VR chat or an old school app like Second Life. The concept is actually really cool, but I don't think the VR aspect of it will ever go super mainstream. VR has been around for a long time now and the technology is really good, but most people just don't like using it. We already know we're addicted to social media and video games. The idea of strapping on a headset to further detach from the real world just doesn't seem like something that humans will do. That being said, metaverses are being built and there will be opportunities there for developers. If you want to get into it, learning something like Unity or Unreal Engine would be a good place to start or 3D modeling software like Blender. Here's my startup idea. 
There's a lot of hype and investment going into the metaverse, and during a gold rush, it's a good idea to sell shovels. The idea is to create something like a Squarespace or Shopify for the metaverse, a platform where any business can build some kind of digital metaverse experience. AR and VR apps are extremely hard to develop. If you can give brands a way to get their foot into the door of the metaverse, there are likely millions of potential customers out there that will want to interact with customers on the metaverse, but don't have the technical skills to get the job done. Now let's switch gears to the next trend, artificial intelligence. AI has come a long way in the last couple of years, and in 2021, it affected us developers personally with the release of GitHub Copilot, which is a tool that uses AI to automatically write code for you. It's not to the point where it's going to replace developers, but I'm sure we'll get there someday. The one thing that's a little disappointing about AI is that it's kind of dominated now by big companies that have control of these algorithms like GPT-3. It would be extremely difficult as an individual or startup to train AI models that can compete with it. For one, you won't have the massive amount of data needed, and two, you won't have the computing power. Point two will become especially true if quantum computers ever become useful. If a quantum computer can train an AI model, then it's pretty much game over. That being said, it's still a good idea to learn data science, because it's still very difficult to process and analyze huge amounts of data, and that means there's a lot of high-paying jobs out there for that role. Here's my startup idea. If you can't beat them, join them. Microsoft has exclusive access to GPT-3, but there's still a public API where you can use GPT-3 to build a product. A lot of people like to interact with psychics, but that business model doesn't scale very well because you need to meet with each client individually. What you could do is use GPT-3 to create an AI-driven psychic hotline where customers could interact with lost loved ones, and GPT-3 would automatically generate responses that come from the other side. Now I want to take a minute to talk about something a little more boring databases. A trend that I've noticed is that relational SQL databases are back in vogue. SQL has always been the most widely adopted type of database, but now it's a cool technology to use again. We're also seeing AI being implemented into databases like MindsDB to make machine learning workflows much easier. In addition, you have tools like PlanetScale and Supabase who are making relational databases much easier to work with. At the same time, you have no SQL databases like MongoDB becoming more and more powerful, which can now be deployed in a serverless way and supports full text search. Then you have Redis becoming a multi-model database to support graph, time series, and full-text search features. Then you have Firestore from Firebase, which really didn't change in 2021, but I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for some new features in 2022. If not, these serverless SQL platforms are looking very appealing. Here's my startup idea. Databases are boring, but boring ideas are also ideas that can make money. If you identify a trend in the industry that's going to require a lot of specialized developers, consider building a job board. It's a really easy app to make, and if you market it well, it can make a ton of money, like over seven figures. You just need to find a specialized segment of the market, then build up a big email list. The next big trend I want to talk about is JavaScript. Always bet on JavaScript. If you learn JavaScript, you'll never go hungry. Last year, I predicted that we're mostly done seeing changes to the big frameworks of React, Angular, and Vue, and that prediction has held true. The core frameworks are pretty much the same. React concurrent mode is still experimental, just as it was last year, while Angular and Vue remain solid and stable. All the exciting stuff is happening with the meta frameworks. Next.js is the leader in this space, and its parent company, Vercel, is now a multi-billion dollar company. What we've done over the last 20 years is come full circle. Originally, we had server-rendered applications, then we went to client-rendered applications, and now we have things like Next.js, which provide the best of both worlds. Nuxt version 3 in the Vue ecosystem looks absolutely incredible, but it's not feature complete at the time of this video. We also have React server components around the corner, and that's led to new frameworks like Hydrogen from Shopify. There's also Remix that we looked at in a previous video, but the most interesting development, in my opinion, is the fact that Rich Harris, the creator of Svelte, was hired by Vercel to work on Svelte full-time. Everybody knows that Svelte is the greatest UI framework ever created. Created, but it came a little too late in the game and never had the financial backing of a big company. That's about to change, which makes me feel very optimistic about the future of Svelte Kit, a framework for server-side rendering. In addition to meta frameworks, you'll also want to keep your eye on meta meta frameworks. One example is Blitz.js, which is built on top of Next and makes it much easier to build a database-driven application. Another really cool JavaScript tool worth mentioning is Astro, which allows you to build a website using one or multiple frameworks at the same time without sending any JavaScript down to the client. Build tools for front-end developers also improved a ton in 2021. The best example is Vite, which provides a far simpler developer experience compared to 
to something like Webpack. It's much faster and way easier to work with. Here's one way that you as an independent developer can make money around meta frameworks. You might be familiar with sites like ThemeForest that sell premium WordPress templates, many of which are based on React, Vue, and Angular. However, if you're building a server-rendered application with a meta framework, these themes aren't very useful. I think there's an opportunity here to create custom server-rendered templates that can help other developers get things done faster. Like Next already has an e-commerce template, but there's an infinite number of variations you could make on this and also provide other templates for e-learning, small businesses, enterprise dashboards, real estate, and all kinds of other industries. Now, because Next is server rendered, you can do things beyond the UI, like integrate Stripe as a payment solution or include SendGrid for transactional email. We now apparently have microscopic robots that can reproduce. That being said, here's some other information that you'll want to know going into 2022. JetBrains is releasing a new lightweight IDE fleet that could compete with VS Code. VS Code itself is better than ever and you can now run it directly in the browser. Tailwind CSS is becoming more and more popular, and it got especially awesome in 2021 thanks to just-in-time mode. TypeScript is also more popular than ever, and we have some cool new features coming to the JavaScript language, like at to get a negative index or the last element in an array. We have top-level await standardized, and a much more ergonomic way to use object prototype has own property. In 2022, GraphQL is still not going to replace REST, and the hype around it seems to have died down quite a bit. WebAssembly is not going to replace JavaScript, but it is quietly changing the world. One example is StackBlitz, which brings server-side capabilities to the browser. No code is still a trend to keep your eye on, but it's still not going to take your job as a developer, just like it hasn't for the last 50 years. When it comes to mobile development, Flutter and React Native will continue to dominate the cross-platform space. You might see brain interfaces like Neurosity, where you write code that can react to changes in your brain waves. AWS will continue to release a bunch of products you don't need, while Google Cloud and Azure continue to play catch-up. The only prediction I'm 100% confident confident of though is that things will change and when that happens I'll be right here on your computer screen with a new video about it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.